Hey everyone, welcome back. We're continuing our reading of the Bible. We are in Deuteronomy chapter 15, picking up on verse 1. And this is the New World Translation version, which belongs to the Jehovah's Witness group. Alright. At the end of every seven years, you should make a release. And this is the manner of the release. There will be a releasing by every creditor of the debt that he may let his fellow incur. Okay, so seven years. Wow, look at that. He should not press his fellow or his brother for payment, because a release to Jehovah must be called. The foreigner you may press for payment, but whatever of yours may prove to be with your brother, let your hand release. Now, look at that. Now, that's really interesting. That's really interesting right there. I didn't know that. And, however, no one should come to be poor among you, because Jehovah will without fail bless you in the land that Jehovah your God is giving you as an inheritance to take possession of it. Only if you will without fail listen to the voice of Jehovah your God, so as to be careful to do all this commandment that I am commanding you today. For... Jehovah your God will indeed bless you just as he has promised you, and you will certainly lend on pledge to many nations, whereas you yourself will not borrow, and you must dominate over many nations, whereas over you they will not dominate. In case some one of your brothers becomes poor among you in one of your cities, in your land that Jehovah your God is giving you, you must not harden your heart or be close-fisted toward your poor brother. Okay, look at that. Charity here. This is very interesting. Very interesting. Here we go. For you should generously open your hand to him and by all means lend him on pledge as much as he needs, which he is in want of. Watch out for yourself, for fear a base word should come to be in your heart, saying, The seventh year. The year of the release has come in close, and your eyes should indeed become ungenerous toward your poor brother, and you should give him nothing, and he has to call out to Jehovah against you, and it has become a sin on your part. Now, I wonder if you had a Christian banker, what they would say to something like this, when you have people who really are taking on debt that is quite, hmm, how do we put it, like, extensive it's going to take over 15 years to pay back that is something we should consider and talk about you should by all means give to him and your heart should not be stingy in your giving to him because on this account jehovah your god will bless you in every deed of yours and in every undertaking of yours for some poor will never cease to be in that midst of the land oh look at that some people are not going to, they're going to remain poor. Look at that. I heard some a person who was contending to be Christian on a live stream. He was making, sort of making fun of people who needed stimulus checks. And I thought that was pretty trashy. Here, it's quite interesting. They're like, oh, if you need $600, you must not have your life in order. And it's like, the government shut down people's livelihood and destroyed entire industries right collapsed economies really drove people into debt i mean it's insane the government can tax you to pay for foreign wars but can't give you any of your tax money back after they forcibly closed your business wow that is why i am commanding you saying you should generously open up your hand to your afflicted and poor brother in your land in case there should be sold to you, your brother, a Hebrew or a Hebrewess, and he has served you six years, then in the seventh year you should send him out from you as this one set free. Seven years. And in case you should send him out from you as one set free, you must not send him out empty-handed. You should surely equip him with something from your flock and your threshing floor and your oil and wine press. Just as Jehovah your God has blessed you, you should give to him. Okay, so look at that. Not only are you supposed to release him, but you're supposed to give him some supplies so he can do well. 
And you must remember that you became a slave in the land of Egypt, and Jehovah your God proceeded to redeem you. That is why I am commanding you this thing today. And it must occur that in case he says to you, I shall not go out from your company, because he does love you and your household, since it was well with him while we with you. If you must also take an awl and put it through his ear and to the door, and he must become your slave to time indefinite. And to your slave girl you should also do this way. It should not be something hard in your eyes when you send him out from your company, as once set free, because for double the value of a hired laborer he served you six years, and Jehovah your God has blessed you in everything that you would do. Every male firstborn that will be born in your herd and in your flock you should sanctify to Jehovah your God. Okay, so look at that. Firstborn, sanctify it. You must do no service with the firstborn of your bull, nor shear the firstborn of your flock. Before Jehovah your God, you should eat it year by year in the place that Jehovah will choose. You and your household, in case there should prove to be in that defect, being lame or blind, any bad defect, you must not sacrifice it to Jehovah your God. Inside your gates you should eat it, the unclean one and the clean one together. Like the gazelle, like the stag, only its blood you must not eat. Upon the earth you should pour it out as water. Well, now we're in 16. Let there be an observing of the month of Abib, and you must celebrate the Passover to Jehovah your God. Because in the month of Abib, Jehovah your God brought you out of Egypt by night. And you must sacrifice the Passover to Jehovah your God, of the flock and of the herd, and the place that Jehovah will choose to have his name reside there. You must eat nothing leavened along with it for seven days. You should eat along with it unfermented cakes, the bread of affliction, because it was in haste that you came out of the land of Egypt. Okay, so that's interesting. Make it unleavened because to, for the yeast to rise, it takes time, right? And sometimes there's no time to wait for the bread to rise. What well, is interesting? That you may remember the day you're coming out of the land of Egypt all the days of your life. And no sourdough should be seen with you in all your territory seven days. Neither should any of the flesh which you will sacrifice in the evening on the first day. Stay all night until the morning. You will not be allowed to sacrifice the Passover in any one of your cities that Jehovah your God is giving you. But at the place that Jehovah your God will choose to have his name reside there, you should sacrifice the Passover in the evening, as soon as the sun sets, at appointed time of your coming out of Egypt. And you must do the cooking and the eating in the place that Jehovah your God will choose. In the morning you must turn around and go to your own tents. Six days you should eat unfermented cakes, and on the seventh day, there will be a solemn assembly to Jehovah, your God. You must do no work. Seven weeks you should count for yourself from when the sickle is first put to the standing grain. You will start to count seven weeks. Then you must celebrate the festival of the weeks to Jehovah, your God, according to the voluntary offering of your hand that you will give, just as Jehovah, your God, may bless you. And you must rejoice before Jehovah, your God, you and your son and your daughter and your manslave and your slave girl and the Levite is inside your gates and the alien resident and the fatherless boy and the widow who are in your midst in the place that Jehovah your God will choose to have his name reside there. And you must remember that you became a slave in Egypt and you must observe and carry out these regulations. The festival of booths you should celebrate for yourself seven days when you make an gathering from your threshing floor and your oil and wine press, and you must rejoice during your festival, you and your son and your daughter and your manslave and your slave girl and the Levite and the alien resident and the fatherless boy and the widow who are inside your gates. Seven days you will celebrate the festival to Jehovah your God in the place that Jehovah will choose, because Jehovah your God will bless you in all your produce and in every deed of your hand and you must become nothing but joyful. Three times in a year, every male of yours should appear before Jehovah your God in the place that he will choose, in the festival of the unfermented cakes, 
and in the festival of weeks, and in the festival of booths, and none should appear before Jehovah empty-handed. The gift of each one's hand should be in proportion to the blessing of Jehovah your God that he has given you. Okay, that's interesting. That's right. You should set judges and officers for yourself inside all your gates that Jehovah your God is giving you by your tribes. And they must judge the people with righteous judgment. You must not pervert judgment. You must not be partial or accept a bribe. For the bribe blinds the eyes of the wise ones and distorts the words of righteousness. Justice. Justice should be pursued in order that you may keep alive and may indeed take possession of the land that Jehovah your God is giving you. You must not plant for yourself any sort of tree as a sacred pole near the altar of Jehovah your God that you will make for yourself. Neither should you set up for yourself a sacred pillar, a thing Jehovah your God hates indeed. Aha, another tree and a pillar. Don't take bribes.